Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to St. John the Baptist uh, Mission Church. Uh, my name is Father Peter Teresa. I'm one of the, the priests stationed here. Uh, we will be beginning our, our, our liturgy of, of matrimony here in just a few minutes. Uh, for, for Mary and Jose, thank you so much for coming. I just ask that in these uh, next few moments and minutes leading up to our liturgy that we would have a, an atmosphere of, of prayer and reverence and silence as we get ready for the wedding. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Jose and Mary, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your families and friends as today, in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this your joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Creating the human race, will that man and wife should be one. Join, we pray, in a bond of inseparable love. These your servants who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become by your grace witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear from the Word of God. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought to them a man, to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals. But none proved to be a suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed, it in its, closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib 
that had been taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one body. The word of the Lord. Blessed the man who greatly delights in the Lord's command. Blessed the man who greatly delights in the Lord's command. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Blessed the man who greatly delights in the Lord's commands. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Blessed the man who greatly delights in the Lord's commands. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He shall never be moved. The just one shall be in everlasting remembrance. Blessed the man who greatly delights in the Lord's command. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steadfast, he shall not fear, till he looks down upon his foes. Blessed the man who greatly delights in the Lord's commands. Lavishly he gives to the poor, his generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Blessed the man who greatly delights in the Lord's command. Una lectura de la Carta de San Pablo a los Romanos. La vida nueva por todos, hermanos míos. No ruego por los miserables de Dios. Sí, se presenten ustedes mismos como ofrenda viva, santa y garable a Dios. Esta es la verdad culta que ofrecen. No vivan ya según los gritos del tiempo presente. Al contrario, cambien su manera de pensar para que así cambien su manera de vivir. 
y alegren con los que voluntad de Dios y decir lo que es bueno, lo que es grato, lo que es perfecto. Vivan alegre con los por las esperanzas que tienen. Soporten con valor los sufrimientos. No dejen de orar. Hagan sus ya las necesarias del pueblo santo. Reciben bien los que los visiten. Bendigan a los que los persiguen. Bendíganlos y no los malegrean. Alegre con los que están alegres y lloren con los que lloran. Viven en armonía, no con con ustedes no sean orgullosos sino pongan a la nueva de su humildad no presumen de sabor no paguen a nadie mal por mal procuren haz lo bueno del, delante de todos Hagan donde puedan, depende de ustedes. Hagan cuando puedan por vivir en la paz con todos. Palabra de Dios. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Father Anthony Tinker, I'm a Franciscan friar of the Holy Spirit, uh, the pastor here of St. John's. I want to thank you all uh, for gathering with us to celebrate this wonderful day, this marriage between Jose and Mary. I want to thank in a particular way uh, Father Paul, Jose's uncle, and Father Kurt, the former chaplain to Mary at Notre Dame Prep, and Father Peter Teresa, uh, one of my fellow Franciscan friars of the Holy Spirit, for celebrating this a wedding with me, and of course, a particular thanks to our members of the Gila River Indian community. Uh, we are on a reservation lands, and so we thank them for allowing us to celebrate their wedding here at this mission church. Um, I've had the privilege of knowing Mary for well over 10 years now, since she was a college student at St. Francis University. I've had the privilege of being Jose's pastor for the past almost eight years here at St. John's, and so it truly is a joyous day uh, to be gathered together. And um, I've, I've been able to be, um, you know, a part of their lives. And so it's a very, very, very special day. Ite ad Yosef. Ite ad Yosef. It's a phrase in Latin. It's a quote from the book of Genesis. It's a quote that Pharaoh says to the people of Egypt in the midst of a famine. He says, go to Joseph. What had happened is that Joseph, who was the second youngest son of Jacob, but the favorite son of his favorite wife, he had two wives and two concubines, is a dreamer. And he's had these wonderful dreams about how the sun and the moon and 11 stars will bow to him. He has 11 brothers. How um, there's 12 sheaves of wheat and the other 11 sheaves bow to the 12th sheep. And he's got these dreams, and his brothers are not too happy because these dreams make him look like he's better than his family, and his father makes his multicolored coat and gives it to him. And he is hated by his brothers. Eventually, they sell him to be a slave in Egypt. And so he's sent down. His father thinks he's dead. And while in Egypt, he has another dream, and this dream... Or his, sorry, Pharaoh has a dream which he interprets. And in this dream, Joseph predicts seven years of plenty harvest, seven years of great harvest for the land, followed by seven years of famine. And so Pharaoh makes Joseph the second most powerful man in Egypt. And he says, you for seven years store up grain while we have plenty, so that when the seven years of famine come, we will be ready. And then when the famine comes, Pharaoh says to the people, Ite ad Yosef, go to Joseph. He is prepared, he is ready, he will feed. I've had the privilege, like I said, of knowing Mary for well over 10 years, and I've been able to discern with her for many things. She wanted to be a veterinarian when I first met her, and uh, so I had to discern with her about that vocation, and then she felt called to be a nun, and so I discerned with her the vocation, and then she remember throwing the baseball, telling me about this young man at St. John's who she thought was quite cute, and wondered if she should start dating him. <laughs> and she has come many times to me to say, Father, how can, what should I do? What should I discern? And now I just want to echo the scriptures and use the Spanish translation and say, va a Jose. But on a serious note, Ite ad Yosef, the church has always applied to St. Joseph. The reason we're having the, the wedding today is because it's the feast of St. Joseph. Technically tomorrow, but the church will celebrate on Monday because tomorrow is a Sunday. And this was the Saturday that was closest to the feast of St. Joseph. And Jose and Mary have consecrated their marriage to St. Joseph. They've asked him to be a particular intercessor for their marriage St. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus, the husband of Mary. And the church, again, applies these words from the Old Testament. They see in Joseph of the Old Testament, the son of Jacob, a prefiguration of St. Joseph. And as Joseph in the Old Testament was there to feed the people in the midst of famine, there to support the people in the midst of difficulty, so St. Joseph was given to his son, was given to Jesus in order to feed, in order to support, in order to care, in order to help. St. Joseph 
is a great saint to consecrate your marriage to. And so you are indeed stepping up, making the right first step as you take that step today and ask for Joseph to intercede and pray for you for many reasons. The first I would like to mention is he and Mary are the model of all marriages. Their family, the holy family, the perfect family. That he shows each and every one of us what it means to be a husband just as Mary shows us what it means to be a wife. He shows us what it means to be a father just as Mary shows us what it means to be a mother. That in the midst of difficulties and trials and tribulations, Joseph is there to provide for his family, to care for his family, to protect his family when they're threatened by Herod who wants to kill his son. He's there to support his family when he has to carry them off into Egypt. He's there to support his family, even when the Romans say, you must go to Bethlehem. You must take your wife who's nine months pregnant and take her and make a long journey. And then when you get to Bethlehem, you start knocking on doors and there are no rooms at the inn. There was Joseph, a faithful steward, a faithful servant, caring for Mary, caring for Jesus as he desires to care for you in your marriage. And he asks you to imitate his example. Jose, the man you're named after, in a very particular way. For just as in the life of St. Joseph, there were many joys, there were also many sorrows. I've mentioned a few of them. The difficulty Joseph would have had, the sorrows he would have felt at learning his wife was pregnant by the Holy Spirit, how he felt so unworthy at that moment. Again, having to take her to Bethlehem and finding no room in the inn. Herod trying to kill his son, having to fly to Egypt. In fact, the church often talks about the seven joys and the seven sorrows of St. Joseph that he experienced in this time, though we don't hear about it much in the scripture. We hear a lot about these joys and these sorrows. In the midst of the joys and the sorrows of your marriage, ite ad Joseph. Go to Joseph. Go to Joseph and know that he will intercede for you, that he will pray for you, that he will show you the example that you need to follow to go closer to Jesus at each and every moment of your lives. There's one sorrow I want to focus on in a particular way today. That's when Mary and Joseph lost Jesus. Jesus is 12 years old. They've gone to Jerusalem to worship and offer sacrifice. And the people of Nazareth have all gone together to make the journey. They then turn around and they're making the journey back to Nazareth. And the, all the tra villagers are traveling together and Mary thinks he's with Joseph and Joseph thinks he's with Mary or they think he's with the kids. And they just think Jesus is traveling with them. And after a day's journey, they go to sleep that night and they look for Jesus and they say, where could he be? And they can't find him. And so in great distress and anxiety, they return to Jerusalem and search for their son. And finally, on the third day, they see him in the temple, speaking with the elders, teaching them the gospel. And the great joy that Mary and Joseph feel as they see their son once again, as they see Jesus once again. And he says, why have you been distressed? Why have you been worried? Don't you know I have to be in my father's house? First, the sorrow and distress Joseph would have felt. I can promise you something in your marriage. You will experience suffering. Talk to any couple who's been married long enough and you will know their sufferings that come in marriage. There'll be difficulties. Maybe... Uh, miscarriage, maybe the loss of a job, maybe a cancer diagnosis, whatever the sufferings and sorrows may be in your marriage, they will come. And there will be struggles and there will be difficulties. In the midst of them, go to Joseph. Know that you are not alone in your sufferings. You're not alone in your pain that oftentimes there'll be a tendency to isolate and try to 
avoid the pain or hide from the pain or simply to work the pain away, go and get caught up in work and tasks and fixing the house and cleaning and other things to avoid the sufferings and sorrows that will come. But like Mary and Joseph, you must travel with each other. I can't even imagine. Again, they traveled for a day before they even realized Jesus was gone. And so it's the middle of the night. They have to wait till the morning and they have to spend a whole day traveling back to Jerusalem. Nothing they can do but simply walk towards their journey for a whole day and the sufferings and the anxieties and the worries that they felt. But they were not alone. For they had each other and they had God. They had the gift of the Holy Spirit who was guiding them, who was leading them, who was with them in the midst of that suffering and that pain. No, you are not alone when the suffering comes. Most importantly, you have our Lord. You have our Lord to be with you in the midst of the sufferings. He who knows suffering more perfectly than anyone else. And you have Mary and Joseph who know suffering, who know deep suffering. For Mary, her heart was pierced by a sword. And Joseph, as we talked about, they have suffered greatly and they can be with you in the midst of your sufferings to help you to experience the pain and the sorrow and the loss that will come and to know you're not alone. And so Itad Yosef, he will feed you in the midst of famine. He will support you in the midst of suffering. He will be with you. Of course, there will be great joys in your marriage. There will be the birth of a child, that child's first steps, then the birth of a second child, and the third child, and the fourth child. <laughs> Itad Yosef in the midst of your joys. You see, because oftentimes in the midst of joys, we can lose track of the Lord. In the midst of the joys that come, we can get caught up in them. Even today, I encourage you, Itaia Yosef, for this will be a joyful celebration, something you've been planning on for a long time and working on, and it'll be over like a flash, and the reception will be over, and you'll be on your way, and there'll be many, many joys and happinesses. But don't forget to turn your heart to the Lord. I can't imagine the great joy and rejoicing that Mary and Joseph would have experienced when they found Jesus once again. And they're walking back. Now they're alone, just the three of them walking back to, to Nazareth. The rest of the group is already a few days' journey ahead of them. And the joy that would have filled the heart of Joseph, the joy he would have experienced, and I'm sure even in the midst of it, they stopped and were singing psalms of praise to God and giving blessing to the Lord in the midst of that journey because they recognized where the joy and the blessing had come from. When the joys and the blessings of your marriage come, recognize where they come from. Itayad Yosef, when Joseph of the Old Testament was put in charge of all of Pharaoh's stores in the midst of famine, he recognized where the gift had come from. He'd been imprisoned, falsely accused. He'd been enslaved by his own brothers. He had known sorrows. And when he was at the top, he was second in command of one of the most powerful nations in the world. He knew where his joy had come from. He knew where his blessing had come from, and he always turned to the Lord with joy and thanksgiving. When those moments come, always stop and pray. One of the beautiful readings we have as an option for our marriage is the, from Tobit where Tobias and Sarah, they get on their knees and they bless God and give him thanks on the night of their wedding. It's their first act together as a couple. The first act that we do here is we celebrate the Eucharist. You will get married and then you'll give thanks. Eucharistia, thanksgiving. That we enter into the sacrifice of Calvary in thanksgiving to God. Let your hearts be lifted up in great rejoicing for what he has done. And help and turn to Joseph to let to get his help in order to know that you're not alone and that you're called to rejoice in the midst of it all. Today, the church rejoices with you in this beautiful, beautiful day. You're not alone. We have a church filled with people, and from what I heard, we had to turn a number of people away. There are many people here who are joining you, 
who are here to pray for you. In fact, that's our responsibility. It's all gathered here. We are called to pray for Jose and Mary in a very particular way. You see, because we need their marriage. In the midst of society that so often turns against marriage, which does not see the value or dignity of marriage, we need good, holy men and women to come together in the sacrament of matrimony to show us the beauty and dignity of this sacrament. For this is indeed a sacrament. A couple days ago, I was asking Mary how she was doing, and she goes, I'm worried about this and worried about that. I said, go to get a holy hour tomorrow. Go to the church. Go pray. Don't lose track of the Lord in the midst of this time. We need you in your marriage to be a light shining forth like a lantern set on a hill of what marriage is supposed to mean, what the sacrament of marriage is supposed to mean. Then as you come in together and being gathered together in a bond that cannot be severed by man, in a bond that is a grace in which two become one, in which you are bonded together before Christ in one of the seven holy sacraments of the church, that something happens to you today when you consent, which is we will not see. I married a couple here at the parish a few years ago, and they'd been married in, by a judge for many, many years, 20, 30 years, their grandparents, great-grandparents now, and, and finally kind of talked to them about, you need to get married in the church, and she rolls her eyes at me, I go, okay, sure, Father. And finally they do it, and we had the ceremony, and you know, she was kind of the whole way through, going through the prep, and like, why do we do this? We've married for many years, like, we're not gonna get divorced, like, what's the point of all this? And we do the marriage, and then we're at the back of the church, it's just them and their family, a small group, and she comes to me with tears in her eyes, looks at me very deeply and says, thank you, Father. I felt it. I experienced the Holy Spirit today. I didn't know we were missing something in our marriage, but now I know we were because the Holy Spirit has come down upon my husband and I in this moment, in this sacrament, to bond us together in a way that the world never could. That is what he will do for you today, and that is what you are called to witness to us, the great joy and blessing of this sacrament. So Itayad Yosef, who you've consecrated your marriage to, when you're struggling and the sorrows come, to know that you're not alone, to give thanks to God when the joys come, to know from whom all blessings flow, that you may be a light and a witness to each other that leads each other to heaven, and to each and every one of us of the joy of this great sacrament. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Everyone to please stand. I'm going to invite Jose and Mary and their two witnesses to please come forward. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. 
Jose and Mary, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and His church? Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Jose, Jose, take you, Mary, Mary, to be my wife. wife. I promise to be faithful to you you. in good times and in bad, in In sickness and in health, health. to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Mary, take you, Jose, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God who joined together our first parents in paradise, strengthen and bless in Christ the consent you have declared before the church, so that what God joins together, no one may put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Mary, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jose, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Bless, O Lord, these aras that Jose and Mary will give to each other and pour over them the abundance of your good gifts. Mary, receive these aras as a pledge of God's blessing and a sign of the good gifts we will share.
Jose received these honors as a pledge of God's blessing and a sign of the good gifts we will share. Dear brothers and sisters, let us accompany this new family with our prayers that the mutual love of this couple may grow daily and that God in his kindness will sustain all families throughout the world. For this bride and groom and for their well-being as a family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the relatives and friends and for all who have assisted this couple, let us pray to the Lord. For young people preparing to intermarriage, and for all whom the Lord is calling to another state in life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all families throughout the world, and for lasting peace among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all members of our families who have passed from this world, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst, as Jose and Mary seal their union, accept our prayer and fill us with your Spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design. But while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth in baptism gives increase to the church through who Christ our Lord. Through him with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without a hint we acclaim. Please kneel if you're able. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you first to thee for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, Eduardo, his assistant, and all those who are holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, 
Cosmos and Damien and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service at the offering of your servants, Jose and Mary, and of your whole, whole family, who entreat your majesty on their behalf. And as you have brought them to their wedding day, so gladden them with your gift of the children they desire and bring them in your kindness to the length of days for which they hope. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve the suffering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them. As once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servants, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, the holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us to the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. 
to us also your servants who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Procepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, aut demos dicere. Ater nostre, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, avvelia pregnum tuum, via voluntas tua, sicur in celo et in terra, Anem nostrum coditianum a nobis orie, et imite nobis debita nostra, sicud et nos dimitimus, debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in temptazione, se libera nos amalo. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these His servants, now married in Christ, He may mercifully pour out the blessing of His grace and make of one heart and love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood those He has joined by a holy covenant. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit, and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenants. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Mary, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, 
they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You may be seated. At this time, we'll have the distribution. At this time, we'll have the distribution of Holy Communion. If you're a member of the Catholic Church, uh, regularly attending Mass in good standing with the Church, and are disposed to receive Communion, we'll invite you to come forward. You may either stand or kneel to receive. You can receive either on the hands or on the tongue. If you do receive on the hands, so please consume Jesus right there in front of Father Kurt or I before turning around and going back to your seat. If you're not a member of the Catholic Church, not regularly practicing, not in good standing with the Church, or not disposed to receive communion, I invite you to remain in your seats and pray or come forward with your arms crossed. We'll say a prayer for you. Thank you.
Just in the name of Jesus.
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and the one chalice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, and that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.
It's my great honor and pleasure to introduce for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. Jose and Mary Zavala. Amen. Amen. 